Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Sabbath. We've got a full, full church today, right? <laughs> Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Um, I hope y'all like my wife's display thing. She came up with it. So as I, I, I guess I fixed it, but she, she brought it up. I was trying to rig up a one that was homemade and it was kind of ghetto. <laughs> But happy Sabbath, good to see everybody here, good to see Brother Rick back, our sound guy. Uh, welcome him to the Christian Lighthouse Church. Um, it's good to see everybody here today, um, everybody smiling and coming together on the Sabbath. God is so amazing. Um, this is our third um, topic on this uh, three-part series of this Prophecy Seminar. If you missed part one and part two, be sure to go back on Facebook on our Christian Lighthouse Church page and check out part one and part two because you might not be able to understand this third part if you don't watch those first two parts. And um, it's a lot to cover, it's a lot to go over with, but um, it's all there. It's all in the Word of God, amen? And um, there's, there's a blessing when we study God's prophecies, amen? amen? There's a big blessing for all of His people because God lets us know where we stand and where we're at in time, right? And uh, we know that we can trust in God's prophecies and not man-made prophecies, right? We don't want to go to witchcraft. We don't want to go to palm reading. We don't want to go to any of those things. We don't want to go to our horoscope, right? That's a big thing today. Everybody's into the horoscopes. Did you know? Did you know you can pronounce a curse in your life by going to the hor horoscopes? You might say, "Well, I read something in my horoscope, and it came true." Did you know that the devil is able to see all your actions in your life, so the devil can guess what you're most likely gonna do, right? When we live according to the flesh, we follow the desires of our own hearts, right? But when we follow the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, we are led in God's way. It is not always what we want. It's not always what we want to follow, right? That's why uh, it says in the Bible that, you know, that, was it Paul, I believe, he said that my, my flesh and my spirit, they're at war with each other, right? They're at war with each other. I want to do what's right, but I end up doing what's wrong. Because our flesh wants to do wrong, right? So we don't want to go to horoscopes because the devil knows the devil knows what kind of life you live. The devil knows what uh, downfalls you have in your life. So we don't want to follow that because the devil will guess and he'll make you believe that those horoscopes are true, right? And at the end, you'll bring a, a curse upon your life rather than a blessing. Amen? The Bible says there's power in the tongue. Right? Mm -hmm. You know, um, I heard a story of this man. He always used to say, I believe, I believe I'm going to die young. I believe that I'm going to die young. He would say that all the time to his friends. And, you know, people would tell him, no, you know, you, how, how do you know you're going to die young? I just have this feeling that I'm going to die young. He kept saying it over and over. There's power in the tongue, right? Well, he did end up dying young. You see how we can bring a curse upon ourselves? We got to trust in God and not in our own flesh. Amen? Amen. We got to trust in the Lord and, and, um, and know that the Lord has blessings for you in your life. And blessings are not always with money. Blessings are not always with material things. Amen? But blessings come in so many different ways. 
It's a blessing to be here today, right? There's coming a day, yes, a blessing to wake up. There's coming a day, there's coming a day where we won't be able to meet in the church. Are you still going to remain faithful? There's coming a day where their persecution will come against God's true people. Are you still going to uh, remain faithful? Or are we going to give in, right? Even though we can't meet in the churches, we'll have to meet at each other's houses. And we'll have to meet, meet in hiding places like they do in China and other places, right? In the Middle East. So we have to be faithful no matter what. But welcome, welcome. That was not my sermon. <laughs> that was not my sermon. Welcome to Christian Lighthouse Church. Welcome, everybody. Happy to see everyone. Happy to see everybody that's watching online. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, if you missed part one and part two of this series, go back and check it out. And this will be part three, the final uh, series of this study. The sermon will be called The Second Beast, The Mark, and The Woman. So you guys get ready. Y'all get your sword ready. And um, right now we're going to do praise and worship as Brother Rick gets the music ready. And uh, we want to... We want to lift our voices before the Lord. Amen. Amen. We want to praise Him. When we praise Him, all our fears and doubts, everything goes away. Amen. Amen. It all goes away. So lift your hearts and your voices upon the Lord. Let Him bless you. Let Him bless you. Uh, Vanessa, if you want to pass those tambourines around. Um, y'all want to dance? Y'all want to jump? If y'all want to shout, go ahead. Amen. We're here to praise God. Hallelujah. Into our hearts. And we give ourselves away, Lord, that you may come into our hearts, Lord, and talk to us, Lord, and bless us, Lord. We invite your Holy Spirit. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Y'all may be seated. Amen. That's a beautiful song. Um, next Saturday, we will be switching up the the praise and worship music, and uh, I believe you guys are going to have some special visitors, right? Amen? Oh, amen. Yes. So, um, we're looking forward to it, that this thing will work. <laughs> there it goes. All right. Well, happy Sabbath. Good morning, everyone. I feel like this poster is blocking me, but it's okay. Um, good morning, good morning. Um, at this time, if anybody has an offering, you feel free to bring it up here to this plate and just put your offering or return your tithes and put it in that plate. And then at the, here in a minute, we'll pray over it. Amen. And then here in a minute, Leanne and Vanessa will have a children's church downstairs and they have a project for, for all the children to do. Oh, glory to God. Amen. You can't reach. <laughs> You can reach? Yeah, right. I can reach the height. Here you go. I can reach. I can reach. All right. All right. Come to them. Here you go. Vanessa has a children's story right now. Let's go ahead and have the children come up here to the front if you want to come up here. And Vanessa's going to have a children's story real quick. So one. <laughs> okay, you guys, welcome to Children's Church. So today we're going to be hearing a story on lion taming. So does anybody here, can anybody tell me who Daniel is? Do y'all know? Oh yeah, I know. Okay, you know? Yeah. You know? Okay, I'll let you tell me a little bit and then I'll let you tell me something, okay? I know. All right. You know too? Okay. <laughs> You know? Yeah, they're both in the Bible. Good job. <laughs> so, what about Daniel? Do you know what what amazing thing happened with him? What animal is Daniel known to be with? Lion. There you go. Yes, this is uh Daniel and the lion. So this is actually. <laughs> no, he, he's not dead. He's <laughs> Yeah, I know, but... 
Okay, okay, so this is the story of Daniel and the lion, and it's called The Lion Taming, and it's based on Daniel 6. Can y'all say Daniel 6? Daniel 6. Daniel 6, okay. Actually, why is all this stuff from Nelly here? My brothers are sick. They're, your brothers are sick? Yeah. Wow. I want to my Daniel. Yeah, it looks great. <laughs> so all of, uh, most of y'all got names from the Bible. That's really cool. Yeah, okay. So a little bit of backstory. Babylon, had, which had been conquered by Judah. Oh, sorry. Babylon, which had conquered Judah, has now been conquered by Darius, the Persian king, just like Daniel's dreams had predicted. So another thing Daniel is well known for is having... Um, um, the crazy dreams that tell him a little bit of the future. And there's another story that goes into that too. Make sure y'all pay attention. Make sure y'all pay attention. And so, uh, Daniel's dreams predicted Darius needed a trustworthy official to help him run his empire. Even though Daniel is quite old, Darius seems, sees that he has integrity. And so, Darius is this great big king and he has a, he has a big empire. And it can get really hard to run an empire all by yourself. So you need someone to help you run that. And so that's what um, Darius had Daniel do. And so Darius had Daniel, uh, it says Daniel did such an exceptional work that Darius decided to promote him to run the whole kingdom. The whole kingdom. That's crazy. Imagine having that much power. And so, and so this made people that were under Daniel upset because they wanted power just as much as Daniel. And so they decided to pass a law that could get Daniel in big trouble. Now, imagine somebody passed a rule at school that can get you into big trouble. That wouldn't be very fun, huh? Let's see. What's, rule, what's one rule at school you don't like very much? Like, um, you have to stand in line or you have to always stay in your seat. That, those are not very fun rules, huh? Or like all the homework you got, um, all the homework you got to do? No. I mean, I know we haven't been in school recently, but whenever you were in school, those weren't fun rules, huh? No. <laughs> yeah, y'all don't like those rules. No, I got. I like lining up. You like lining up? Are you always in the front? Yeah. Are you the leader? I, I, I sometimes. Sometimes. I have all my friends are in the leader. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so see, whenever your friend's a leader, you get jealous sometimes, right? Because you want to be in the front of the line. You want everybody to follow you. And that's what happened. Um, Daniel was the leader, and everybody got jealous of him. And so they decided to pass a rule that, that anybody who bowed down to anybody, that, sorry, anybody who bowed down to any other gods except for Darius, which is the king, he's not a god, but he, they passed a law that they could not bow down to anybody but him. And Daniel was very faithful to the big man in the sky. And so he didn't care. He didn't care that if this rule was passed, he was still going to pray to his God. And so they followed him and they spied on him. And Daniel and Daniel goes to his upstairs room where the windows face Jerusalem. There like he's done every day for the past 70 years. So imagine every single day for 70 years you go sit at a window and you pray to the window facing Jerusalem. It's kind of crazy that, to think of how old Daniel is. It said at the beginning that Daniel was really old, but he, um, he did this for so long, and so it's just routine to him. Of course he prayed to God, but it's just routine to him. And this did not make um, the people happy that he was, following, he was following his God. And so they went back to the king and said, you can't take back this law. I know he's your best friend, but you're going to have to punish him because you broke your law. And so the king was very sad and said, I see, now my advisors have tricked me into sending Daniel to his death. And so the, the rule for breaking the law is that he was going to be thrown into the lion's den. So he was going to be thrown into a big hole with nothing but lions. Nothing but hungry lions. You saw that. You, yeah, have you, seen, have you seen how big lions are? Have you ever been to the zoo? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, we watched that. Oh, yes. Yeah. You watched the movie, Daniel? Uh, yeah. Yes. And it's called, uh, 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 I watched that movie. Okay. What? Uh, me and my mom and, and my cousin Zeke and Nat and went all into the zoo. You got to see all the animals, yeah. huh? And how big are the lions? They're huge. Yeah, yeah but he and we saw the lions. They're yeah, they're crazy. crazy. Okay, what were you going to say? You were going to say something. The animals were big? Yeah, yeah they were big, huh? Yeah, it's, 
Uh, yeah, okay, so oh, one more one more question. Yes. Um, a God said, said this yes, he did. They are all got that right. So yes, whenever Daniel was thrown into the lion's den, he prayed to God. He prayed to God and said, please keep me safe. And that's exactly what God did. God closed the lion's mouth so they couldn't hurt him. And he made them keep to themselves, like without their claws and stuff. And so um, the king was very worried for his friend. He was, even though he had to throw him in there, it was the law. He couldn't break the law. He was very worried for his friend. It said that he could not eat and he could not sleep. And as soon as the sun came up on the next day, uh, the king... The king went to the hole, uh, the hole where he had Daniel, and he took the big rock, because there was a big rock covering that, and he said, yeah. Daniel, has your God saved you? And Daniel called out and said, yes, my Lord is very graceful, and he saved me. And so the two bad guys, remember I told you the two bad guys who were jealous of Daniel? You were going to say something, I'm yeah, sorry. Because I saw that, that big rock. You saw the yeah, big rock? Yeah, it's got a picture on here. Can I see that I'm going to show you all the book when we go downstairs, okay? Like we do all the other times? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, you do like that, huh? Okay? So, so um, Darius moved the big rock, and the two people that were jealous of Daniel and had him thrown in there in the first place, the king had them thrown in there instead, and God wasn't very happy with them, so he didn't do the same thing with the lions that he did for Daniel. He didn't close their mouth. And so, um, the lions did get a hold of those two guys, but... Daniel was safe, and the king promoted Daniel back to where he was. So he was back in charge. That's crazy, huh? He went from being a convict in a, um, well, not convict, I don't know what that means. He went from being a bad guy in a, in a lion's den to being back as leader of an empire. That's crazy, huh? Yeah. That's crazy, yeah. <laughs> so what, what do you think you would do if you were in a lion's den? You would be scared, huh? Yeah. yeah, I would be really scared. I don't, I don't know what I would If do. I was in the blind, then, then God would shut the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> the mouth. <laughs> yeah, so we got to pray to God and we got to have faith in God, right? If we have faith in Him, we, well, no, we know that He'll take care of us. Our lives are in His hands. Okay? Yeah? One more question, then we're going to go downstairs and do our activity, okay? Yes. What was, like, how was he praying? He, um, I guess he just, he got down on his knees and he prayed. It shows, uh, it shows him praying, and I'll let you look at the pictures. It shows him praying and it says, Lord, please have mercy on me and keep me safe. And so, yeah, so he, he prayed to God and God answered his prayer to keep him safe. Yes, one more, okay. Why, why did God shut Daniel's mouth? No. She said, why did, the, why did God shut the mouth? Oh, because he, God wanted to keep Daniel safe because Daniel served God for so long and he saw that he was a faithful person, so he wanted to keep him safe. Did Daniel say Ian? Daniel didn't get Ian? No, he did not get eaten. Yeah, God kept him safe. That's cool, huh? One more question. What? Okay, one more, and then we gotta go. Okay. <laughs> one more. What's your question? So, how how did they throw uh, Daniel into the lion's den? Well, it shows in the picture of them lowering him down with ropes tied around him. So they lowered him down, and then he had to sit in there with the lions. So yeah. So y'all want to gather around so we can pray? Yeah. Okay, we're going to pray, and then we're going to go down. You want to carry the books? Can you look at all the pictures? Okay. Can I carry the books? Everybody gather around. Come on. Okay, it's okay. Come on. Okay, so ready? Yeah. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for everything you've done. Uh, I want to say a big happy thank you for bringing all the children together today for our story. And thank you for letting us learn about how you're merciful and we can trust our lives in your hands, Lord. And <laughs> help us with our activity today and we can learn more about you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 There we go. The book was funny. So what are we doing today? <laughs>
so good for us to teach the kids about the Word of God, amen? amen. Teach them the stories and everything that the Word of God has for us. We can also learn things, right? As adults, we can also learn a lot of things. You know, uh, a lot of times we want to jump into the deep things of the Word of God, amen? We want to jump into the deep uh, studies, you know, into the meat of the Word. But a lot of times we got to start first with milk. We got to start with the basics, amen? Fall in love with our Creator. Fall in love with Jesus Christ, amen? We want to fall in love, have a deep relationship with Him. Therefore, when we get to the meat of the Word, when we get into the deeper things of the Word, it'll all make sense, Amen. right? Even these beasts, even these prophecies, even these things that we're covering here today, all this only glorifies who the real Creator is, right? This is showing us that God is in control and He knows the kingdoms that are coming and the things that are happening throughout history and throughout the future. So this only shows us that God is in control. Actually, the book of Revelation is called the Revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Let us pray once again. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Lord, uh, we come humbly before you, Lord, and we ask that you uh, open our hearts and speak to our minds. Give me the words to speak, Lord, and help us to understand your prophecies, Lord. Help us to study your word and understand your word. And uh, be with us, be with each person here, and be with each person watching. We thank you, Lord, for everything. Lord, we ask forgiveness of our sins. And we just thank you for everything, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 The title of my sermon is called, Second Beast, the Mark, and the Woman. Amen. Uh, the, pa the previous Saturdays, we covered on the part one of the image of the man with four medals. And then last Saturday, we covered part two on the four beasts and the little horn. You guys need to go back and check out part one and part two. And this part three will come together and it will make a lot more sense. Amen. Um, it's a lot to cover all in one day. It's a lot to cover all in one day. That's why I broke it down into three sections. The second beast, the mark and the woman. What is all this about? Amen. What is God trying to show us? What is God trying to tell us through all these images? These are crazy images. I remember when I first gave my life to God um, and they had a prophecy seminar at this uh, church. They were covering all this and I was like, is that really in the Bible? They're like, yes, it really is. So uh, they took me to the Bible, and uh, the Bible just comes alive. It has so much information for us, right? It has so much things that will build our faith in God. It'll bless your heart. Amen? Amen. It'll bless you, your life. Let's review, though, real quick. Let's review real quick the statue, the four medals, and the ten toes, the four beasts, and the ten horns. All right? So I'm going to come over here real quick, and I'm going to point to this picture. We're going to review real quick. We studied uh, the first Sabbath. We studied that Daniel had a vision, right? Or actually Nebuchadnezzar had a vision, and Daniel had to explain this vision. So he had a dream of this statue of this man right here. Um, the head was of gold. The chest was of silver. The, the midsection was of brass or bronze, and the fourth section of the legs was iron. And then, of course, any human has ten toes, right? It says that the ten toes were part of iron and part of clay. We studied that Babylon represented the head of gold, all right? We studied that the chest was the Medo-Persian Empire. Check it out, two arms, the Medes and the Persians, one arm, two, uh, second arm. The midsection was Greece, with bronze. The fourth was mentioned as Rome, okay? So Rome was of iron, the iron monarchy, right? But Rome was not taken over by another kingdom, but yet it was divided into 10 little kingdoms, which that's why this image has 10 toes. 
which makes Europe today. Those ten toes is Europe over there uh, on the other side of the world, okay? And it says that it would be part iron and part clay. Iron is stronger than clay, so some kingdoms would be stronger than the others. Some would be weaker than, uh, than the others, right? Well, that was the first Saturday. We also saw that a rock came out of nowhere, and it hit the image on the feet, on the, on the toes, right? And it destroyed the whole image, and it became the kingdom of God, right? That rock represents Jesus Christ. That rock is Jesus Christ. So that Jesus Christ comes during the time of the European nations. We didn't exist in Babylon. We didn't exist during the Middle Persian Empire. We don't exist during the Greek Empire. We didn't exist during the Roman Empire, right? But we exist during the European empires, right? So Jesus, when he comes, he's coming during this time. Of course, the Bible says that we don't know the day or the hour. But the Bible does say that by his signs, we will know that we're closer to the end. Amen? But Jesus Christ comes during this time and destroys this whole image, which are kingdoms. All right? The second Sabbath, part two, last Saturday, we studied on these four beasts. Right? The lion with wings, the bear with three ribs, the leopard with four heads, and the terrible monster with ten horns, right? This is another dream given to Daniel. And it's the same exact thing as this image over here. The lion with wings represents Babylon. It existed from 605 to 539 BC. BC means before Christ. The, the bear with the three ribs, is the Middle Persian Empire. It says that the bear is seen raised on one leg. I don't know why it was standing like this. <laughs> but it was standing like this because it says that the Medes or the Persians was stronger than the other one. So this is the Middle Persian Empire. The third beast is a leopard with four heads. This leopard represents Greece. The reason it has four heads because when... Uh, I forgot his name. The general for Greece. The king for Greece. Alexander. Alexander the Great. When Alexander the Great died from drunkenness, he had an alcohol problem. He died of drunkenness. Instead of leaving his kingdom to another king, he forgot. A, he never appointed somebody else to be king. So his kingdom was ruled by the, his four generals. That's why this leopard has four heads. You see how much detail God gives us? You see how much uh, accuracy, how accurate God is with his prophecies? Amen? And then it says the fourth beast was a terrible beast, right? It said uh, it crushed everything that it came across. This fourth beast had uh, ten horns. The same as this image over here has ten toes. This image has ten toes. This image over here has ten horns. So this is Europe up here because Rome would later be divided into ten little kingdoms. So Babylon, Middle Persia, Greece, and Rome. Babylon, Middle Persia, Greece, then Rome, Europe, Europe. Ten, ten, right? Then it says that Daniel was in vision and he said, let us concentrate on the fourth beast. Let us concentrate on this fourth beast because something interesting is going to happen. Amen. Something very interesting is going to happen. It says, I looked at the ten horns and, and I looked at the horns and in the midst of the horns, a little horn comes out. It says a little horn comes out in the middle of these ten horns, right? Which is this right here. The, this little horn is just magnified right here. This little horn comes out and destroys three of the other little kingdoms. And if you go to history, the Bible tells you that it was Rome, papal Rome, that destroyed three little kingdoms in Europe. So to this day, in Europe, there's only seven. There used to be ten, but now there's only seven 
because this, when this little horn came out, it destroyed three of the other, of the other ten kingdoms. All right. So this little horn it says it speaks blasphemy, blasphemy. Right. We looked in the Bible what the definition of blasphemy means. Right. Blasphemy means being able to forgive your sins, or being a, or being able to say that you are God here on earth. That is blasphemy. For anybody to say, I am God, that is blasphemy against God. Amen? For anybody to say, I'm able to forgive your sins, that is blasphemy against God. And we studied, it tells us that this little horn, and this is all, all this is in the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 2, Daniel chapter 7. This little horn is also in the book of Daniel. All right? And then we saw the characteristics of this little horn. This little horn becomes the Antichrist beast in the book of Revelation. Now we're going to cover these two images here in a minute. From here down, this Antichrist beast, the second beast, and the woman riding the beast, all these three images are found in the book of Revelation. Okay? Okay. These other images are found in the book of Daniel. But check it out. Revelation chapter 13, verse 1 through 7, I believe. It tells us that this Antichrist beast has the head of a lion. Y'all see that? It says that it has the body of a leopard. It says it has the feet of a bear. And it has the horns of the fourth beast. Y'all see the resemblance? This, the little horn, it, it mixed all these four beasts and became the Antichrist. In the book of Revelation chapter 13. Alright? So now that we covered these four beasts, we're not going to talk about these anymore. We're going to focus from here downward. And then all these two images too. This Antichrist beast right here, is the Antichrist. This is what is going to be pushing the mark of the beast. This is what we are studying in the future, right? These are in the past. These happen in the past. All these images happen in the past. Sir, if you want to just take a seat and join us, feel free to join us. All right. These four beasts were in the past. Babylon was a world ruling kingdom. Medo Persia was a world, world ruling kingdom. Greece was a world ruling kingdom. Rome was a world ruling kingdom, right? What, during what kingdom did Jesus Christ come and was born as a baby and was crucified? It was Rome. That's right. During this kingdom, this is when Jesus Christ was born as a baby. And was crucified on a Roman cross, right? So that kind of helps us understand a little bit where we are in history, right? All this happened thousands of years ago, right? Jesus Christ died on the cross 2,000 years ago. Amen? 2,000 years ago. Before 2,000 years ago, this planet, this earth has been here 4,000 years. So we've been here roughly 6,000 years. That's why we cannot trust evolution. What does evolution teach? That we've been here for billions and trillions of years, right? That's a lie. That's why we don't believe in evolution. We don't believe in that type of, of evolution. That, uh, we, that, we, that the universe exploded and everything came together, right? When you throw, if I was to throw a, a bomb into a junkyard, is it going to form a car together? No, it's just going to cause more destruction. And that's what evolution teaches, right? So now we're going to study on this first beast. And when I say this first beast, I'm referring to the first beast in the book of Revelation. I'm not referring to these beasts anymore. This is one, two, three, four, and then the book of Revelation is the first beast and the second beast. I just don't want you guys to be confused. But check it out. So Babylon, Middle Persia, Greece, Rome, the ten toes or the ten horns was the Germans, the Swiss, 
the French, the Italians, the English, the Portuguese, the Spanish, the Herlai, the Vandals, and the Ostrogoths no longer exist. Now they're extinct because the little mourn, the Antichrist system, destroyed the, those three little kingdoms, right? This little horn is none other than the Vatican, all right? The Bible says they had eyes of a man, and this man spoke blasphemies, right? So we were able to, through studying this prophecy, we were able to see that the little horn is the Vatican with the man as his head, and was able to speak blasphemies because this kingdom says we can forgive your sins. This kingdom says the Pope is here, God here on earth, right? And we know that is that we there, there's only one true God. Amen? Amen. Elohim. Right? Amen. God the Father. God the Son. Jesus Christ, Yeshua, right? But they claim that they're in charge. This little horn becomes the Antichrist in Revelation chapter 1, verse 2. 1 through 2. Let's read it. Let's go to Revelation chapter 1. I mean, chapter 13, verse 1 and 2. Revelation chapter 13. 1 and 2. Then I stood on the sand of the sea, and I saw the beast rising up out of the sea. Having, or I saw the I saw a beast rising out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and on his horns ten crowns, and on his heads blasphemous name. Right? And on the beast which I saw was like a leopard, the feet were like the feet of a bear, and the mouth was the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him power, his throne, and great authority. So we're talking about right here the Antichrist beast. Right? We're talking about the first beast. Right here. It has the head of a lion. has the, the body of a leopard. The feet of a bear. And um, it has the horns of the fourth beast. Right? And it says the dragon gave it his power. It says it came out of the sea. Here in a minute we're going to see that the second beast comes out of the earth. But this first beast comes out of the sea. The sea or the water represents a multitude of people. So this Antichrist system came out of a populated area. An area where there was many, many languages and many people. Amen? So we were able to study that in the middle of Europe, the Vatican came out. A little kingdom. The most powerful kingdom, even though it's small, is the most powerful kingdom in the world. Amen? So this is the first beast that it's talking about right here. All right. It has the characteristics of those other animals. So here we have the four beasts in the Old Testament, and now, and two is, and two of the beasts in the book of Revelation. But we, but who is the dragon that gives the beast the power in the book of Revelation. Who is the dragon? It's not Bruce Lee. <laughs> right? We, who is this dragon? Who is this dragon that gave this beast, this first beast in the book of Revelation, its power? I could tell you, right? But let's go to the Word of God. Let's go to Revelation 12, verse 9. Revelation 12, verse 9. So the dragon, the great dragon was cast out that serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world and was cast down to the earth, and with his angels they were cast out with him. The dragon is the devil. The dragon is Satan. You see why it's so dangerous for us to meditate? You see why it's so, it's so, it's so uh, wrong for us to, you know that, um, the devil can also give you supernatural powers, right? Because Satan is a supernatural being. He's an angel, but he's a fallen angel. He's an evil angel, amen? amen. So when you go to martial arts, you know, you, 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 if, you take, if you ever take martial arts, 
and they're saying enter the dragon or meditate or you know meditate before the dragon all it is is they're meditating before the devil and they can receive supernatural powers when they're doing their martial art uh, fights so we got to be careful horoscope we should meditate on anything yoga meditation don't even mess with it that that's a you know the devil uses whatever he can for us to capture our mind right we don't want to receive the supernatural powers from the devil we want to receive the supernatural powers from the holy spirit amen from god if god desires to give you some supernatural powers he can but if he desires not to he won't either way we serve him amen but we don't need to trust any other thing this dragon, this the Satan, the devil, he gives the, the power and the, the abilities to do supernatural things to this first beast. Isn't that crazy? Which is the Vatican. It's not just a world ruling power. Did you know that almost every, or actually every country in the world is connected to the Vatican? Did you know that Rome symbolically still controls the whole world? Look at your dollar bill. Did you know what was the language for Rome? Latin. Why does your dollar bill have Latin written, Latin words written on the dollar bill? Rome still controls the whole world all the way around, one way or another. They control Bank of America. They have so many things. I mean, I don't want to go into all those details. But uh, the devil is the one that gives this little kingdom the power, right? We also studied last Saturday that the definition for this first beast, the colors were red and purple. So all you got to do is look into this little kingdom, and they're all wearing red and purple. All right, Revelation 13, 1 and 2. This is first beast in Revelation, which is a false... This first beast in Revelation is a form of false Christianity. Amen? You know that um, a lot of people ask me, why is Christianity so popular or so it's so, there's so many Christian churches here in the United States, right? Or even in Mexico, right? But why, like, people in Iraq and Iran and uh, in China and a lot of people in the Middle East want nothing to do with Christianity? And they, they follow all these other religions, right? They follow all these other religions. Have you ever asked yourself that question? Did you know that uh, Jesus, and er almost everything that's written in the Bible, it all happened in the Middle East? And But yet, most of them want nothing to do with Christianity over there. But we do here. Why is that? It's because when this fourth beast, Rome, took over Christianity said, we will make Christianity our way, right? We will mix paganism with Christianity. And they presented a false form of Christianity, right? That's what the ten toes are. Yes. So they presented a false form of Christianity. So when you go over there across the world and you, and you uh, mention Christians, the first thing that comes to their mind is the Catholic Church. They don't even they don't even know about most of them don't even have never heard of other churches. When you say are you a Christian? Like, no, I'm not Catholic. That's the first thing they'll say. Because that's how they understand Christianity means. This fourth beast mix Christianity with paganism. And that's why a lot of people on the other side of the world want nothing to do with Christianity. Because they see this whole mess. They're like, y'all ain't Christians. You know what I mean? 
But we're going to go more into detail about this. But the Bible mentions the second beast. Did you know that? The book of Revelation chapter 13 mentions a second beast. This first beast is the Antichrist, right? The Vatican. The Bible mentions a second beast that does the final persecution in the end towards God's, uh, towards God's true followers. The second beast makes an image to the first beast. What does it mean to make an image? When you take a picture of yourself or of somebody else, is that picture literally that person? No. It's an image of that person. So the second beast, the second kingdom, remember beast only means kingdom. It doesn't mean a literal beast. The second kingdom is going to make an image to the first beast. It's going to copy everything that the Vatican does, right? It copies everything literally and spiritually, just as I mentioned with the dollar bill, right? Let's read about it. Revelation chapter 13, 11 through 18. It's quite a bit of verses to read, but I must cover them. Revelation 13, 11 through 18. And this is John in vision, right? Then I saw another beast coming up out of the earth. Notice it said out of the earth and not out of the waters. And he had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon. And he exercised all the authority of the first beast in the presence and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed, right? And, if you, and he performs great signs and even makes fire come down out of heaven on the earth and in the sight of men. And he deceives those who dwell on the earth and, to, and by those signs he was granted to do in the sight of the beast, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. And he was granted power to give them breath to the image of the beast that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be what? To be killed. He caused all both small, great, rich, and poor, um, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand and on their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark of the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is 666. This is all in the Bible, right? This is telling us a second beast comes out. A second kingdom comes out from the Vatican. And it's going to do everything that Rome did. They're going to persecute God's people. They're going to enforce the mark of the beast, right? If you don't have, if you don't, if you have the mark of the, if you don't have the mark of the beast, they will persecute you, and eventually try to kill you, right? Notice that it's this second beast that pushes all this, but the one behind it is the first beast. The Vatican and Rome is just sitting back, and and as the big boss, right? And it's telling this second kingdom, go do my work. Right? We all know that if you're a boss at your job, every boss has a boss, right? You're not the boss, but somebody always has a boss above them, right? Unless you own the place. <laughs> but check it out. So who is the second beast? Before answering, remember Revelation 13.3 tells us that the Vatican receives a deadly wound. Then later it would be healed, right? The Vatican power received a deadly wound around in the year 1798. The Pope was taken captive and Catholicism ceased to exist for a good while. Why was the Pope taken captive? Over there in Europe, they were tired of Roman Catholicism. 
They were tired of being controlled by the church. Is that a church when you're controlled by the church? No. Is that a church of God if you're controlled by the church? No. I can preach what we ought to do. I can preach that we need to be obedient to God. I can preach that we need to repent from our sins. I can preach that we need to stop doing drugs. I can preach that we need to stop getting drunk, cheating on our spouses. I can preach all I want on all these truths. But if you choose not to do those things, that's between you and God. Amen? I cannot force you to do anything. Christianity should never be forced upon anyone, right? I can preach the truth, but then it's up to you. It's between you and God. But the moment the church starts forcing you to do things, then, you know, that, that's, that's not a good thing. Amen? We're not here to force anybody to do anything. God is the, we plant the seed, we share the gospel, we tell people to repent from their sins, but it's up to you. It's between you and God whether you will answer or not, right? So in 1798, Europe was tired of this, of this Antichrist system, and uh, they took the Pope captive. They said, we don't want no, no more Catholicism, right? And I believe he died in prison. And Catholicism ceased to, to exist for a good while. Um, this is when the Antichrist beast in Revelation 13, they received a deadly wound. That's what it means, they received a deadly wound. But when you get a wound, it heals, right? It comes back into power. And we see that this deadly wound is healed to this day. This deadly wound would be healed and this, this Antichrist system is in great power right now, right? But there for a while it ceased to exist. But what else happened during 1798? Well, in, in 1791, the United States adopted the Bill of Rights, all right? And in 1798, the United States was recognized as a world Power. This second beast is none other than the United States of America. All right. At the same time as the as this Antichrist beast, the first beast in the Book of Revelation received his deadly wound. At the same time, when this Antichrist beast received his deadly wound. A second beast came out, but this time the second beast came out of the earth in a less populated area. And we know that the United States, they own, you have the, the Native Americans, but it was not heavily populated by different nations. So when this received a deadly wound, the second beast came out, which is the United States of America. It said it had horns like a lamb, but it spoke like a dragon. I'm proud to be American. I don't know about you. I'm proud to be American. But I'm more proud to be a follower of God. Amen. Because this, this, this kingdom will eventually push the mark of the beast. Amen. It says that this kingdom makes an image to this first beast. It copies everything that this first beast does. Right? That's why I put these two pictures here. They look similar, right? These two images look very similar, right? This is the Vatican with the oblisk pole. This is the White House with the Washington Monument, the oblisk pole. You notice how they're very similar? It ain't just spiritually make an image to the first beast, but it literally made an image to the first beast. This oblisk pole was originally in Egypt. The Egyptians, when the sun would rise to the tip of this pole, they would bow down and worship the sun. All right? 
So why would the Vatican steal that image and put it at the Vatican from Egypt? What was the main false god for Rome? Sun worship. Babylonian religion. It was passed down from Babylonian to all these kingdoms and to Rome. And then Rome became papal Rome. The Vatican. Roman Catholicism. And they took that image with them of sun worship. That's why they changed the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday in honor of their sun god. Symbol of sun worship. This obelisk pole is a symbol of sun worship. The question is, why is it found at the White House? Why is it found in the United States? Right? Did we just read that the second beast will enforce the mark of the beast? What is the mark of this beast? It's right there. Sun worship. The second beast will enforce the mark of the beast. It's right before our eyes. Amen? This, not to sound terrible, but this obelisk pole also represents the male's organ. But they worship the sun. Why would you have a memorial of sun worship in a place of worship? Right? This is the first beast, the Antichrist, the Vatican, Rome. This is the second beast. It says, it had two horns like a lamb. Who does the lamb represent? Jesus Christ. It says this second beast will come out as a Christian nation. It will teach godly things. I mean, we even hear it in our uh, national anthem, right? We, we, you know, in God we trust, we say it in the uh, Pledge of Allegiance, right? It comes out like a lamb, but it speaks like a dragon. Did this kingdom not practice uh, slavery? Has this kingdom not done any other things right? So it has always spoke as a dragon from the beginning. But it will really speak as a dragon when it pushes the mark of the beast. Amen? This is the first beast. This is the first beast. This is the second beast. This is the second beast. In the book of Revelation chapter 13. Alright? But it goes even further. It goes even further. This is so amazing, right? This is awesome. The second beast is none other than the United States of America. But you know what? Does that mean that everybody in the United States is evil? No. God's people can be found all around the world. Amen? God's people can even be found in the Vatican system. God's people can even be found in Catholicism. Amen? It's just because they don't know any better. We're not talking about individuals. We're not talking about the Catholic people. Some of my closest friends are Catholic. Amen? But yet, we're, we're rather talking about the system and how it's deceiving people. And how in the last days, the United States will enforce the mark of the beast around the world. The Bible says it had horns like a lamb, but it spoke like a dragon. You have the obelisk pose that symbolizes sun worship. Right? What other resemblance does the, the United States have to Rome? The eagle. The bald eagle. If you've ever seen the Passion of the Christ, then you see the Romans marching in and they have an eagle. What's the symbol for the United States? The eagle, right? We also see the resemblance in the buildings, the architect, right? That is actually Greek. Everything that Greece practiced, Rome took over. Greek mythology, right? You have Zeus, you have all these false gods. You have all these pagan holidays. 
Christmas, Easter, Halloween. This Antichrist system took these pagan practices and said, okay, now I'll make them Christian. And us, we fall for it and we just follow it. We don't even study it. We don't even ask about it, right? Mm -hmm. But it changed the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday. And many Christians will argue with me today, it doesn't matter which day you keep holy. The Bible says the seventh day is holy, right? It's what the Bible says. And many Christians will say, well, we keep Sunday holy in honor of the resurrection. Well, it sounds good, but that was the words from Constantine. Those were words from Constantine, the Roman emperor. That's not even in the Bible. The Bible says, if you want to honor my resurrection, get baptized. That's what the Bible says. If you really want to honor my resurrection, uh, be born again and be baptized. That's how we honor the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Not by changing the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday, right? But we all see here why they did this change. They changed the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday to honor their sun god. Amen? I've heard another argument. What if I keep the Sabbath but also go to church on Sunday? Right? I'll admit, sometimes if I get invited to a, a, a Sunday uh, believing church, I'll go preach on a Sunday. But to make it a custom for me to uh, keep, uh, keep their day holy every Sunday, I won't do it. I'll go for special occasions. Somebody's getting married or there's a funeral, I'll go for those things. But to, to make it a practice of going to church every Sunday, we're telling God, I don't care about your Sabbath. Because the, the, the Sabbath was changed. From, from, from Constantine changed the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday, right? Saying this is our holy day. This is our mark of authority, right? That's what they're saying. Is there anything wrong with October 31st? No. According to God, there is not. But is there anything wrong with Halloween? Yes. You see how the day itself it's not bad. It's what you choose to do with that day. Therefore, Sunday, if you want to worship God on Sunday, it's okay. But to have fellowship with other believers and have a church service every Sunday, you're honoring the sun God. Right? And we're saying no to the Sabbath. We don't want paganism brought into the church and, 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 and for us to follow that in, instead of the truth. Amen? Amen. We want to follow God's truth no matter what. I know it's a lot for us to, to receive and study, but it's all there. Amen? What is the mark of the beast? Well, first we need to know who the beast is. The, the, the Antichrist beast, the first beast, is none other than the Vatican, right? Or false Christian Rome. So what is the mark of the Vatican? We could say it, right? What is the mark of the Vatican beast? Yes, 666, but that's not the mark. The mark is sun worship. It's right there before, before their, the Vatican. The sun worship. That is the mark of the beast. Symbolically, right? Did you know that in the Bible it was prophesied that God's people would be worshiping the sun? It's in the Bible. Let's go to it. The book of Ezekiel chapter 8. The book of Ezekiel chapter 8. And it talks about a lot more, but I'm just going to cover this Bible verse. Ezekiel chapter 8, verse 16. God knew that God's people would rebel and end up worshiping the sun, right? 
Ezekiel chapter 8, verse 16. This is talking about when Ezekiel had a vision and an angel of God came and grabbed him from his hair. He must have had long hair. <laughs> he grabbed him from his hair and was taking him like flying around. It's pretty crazy, right? If you have a dream and you have an angel come grabs you from your hair and is taking you around and showing you, hey, look, look what's going on over here. Hey, look, look what's going on over here, Ezekiel. Right? That's exactly what's happening right here. I just wanted to give you all a vivid imagination. So he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house. All right? And there in the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar, were about 25 men with their backs towards the temple of the Lord and their faces towards the east. And they were worshiping the sun towards the east. This is God's people. It's not talking about pagan people. This is talking about God's people in His house, in His place of worship. God sent an angel to take Ezekiel and show him what God's people were doing in His house. Right? What do you allow to happen in your house today? It's your house, right? You're in charge of your house. Are you going to allow bad things to happen in your house? Or are you going to represent God, right? This is in the church of God. This is in the temple of God, right? God's people, were they had the door open and the door faced the east. Can you imagine, right, when we come into the church and say there was a big door right there and it was facing towards the sun? And instead of us facing this way, we're all facing that way and worshiping the sun. That's exactly what was happening. Does God know what's going to happen in the future? Yes. God knew that in God's church, His followers, those that claim to be His followers, would be worshiping the sun one day. That was literally, today is symbolically, Right? When we choose to keep Sunday holy, we're saying we don't care about our Creator. Because the Sabbath represents the Creator and His creation. It's the fourth commandment. When the little kids come here at the end of the service, they're, they're doing a project about the Ten Commandments. The fourth commandment in the Ten Commandments says, remember to keep the Sabbath day holy. Amen? Six days shall you do all your work, but on the seventh day, you shall rest. Amen? That is the mark of the beast. Who is this woman riding a beast? No. <laughs> Who is this woman riding this beast, this Antichrist beast, this image down here? Who is this woman right here? What does a woman represent in the Bible? A church. In the book of Jeremiah, chapter 6, verse 2, I'm not going to go and read it, but you can write it down if you want. In the book of Jeremiah, chapter 6, verse 2, it tells us that a woman represents a church. So there's a church controlling the Antichrist. Rome, or the Vatican, right? There is a church that's controlling this beast. Let's read about it. Revelation chapter 17, verse 1. This is John in vision now. You know the disciple of Jesus, John? This is the book of Revelation was written by John. Revelation, Revelation chapter 17. Revelation chapter 17, verse 1. Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bows came and talked with me, saying, Come, I will show you the judgment of the great prostitute who sits on many waters. Right? Now let's jump down to verse 3 through 5. 
So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast, which was full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in what? Purple and scarlet, or purple and red, and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls, and having in her hand a golden cup, Remember that, a golden cup full of the abominations of the filthiness of her fornication, right? Verse 5, and on her forehead a name was written, Mystery, Babylon, the great mother of prostitutes and of the abominations of the earth. That's powerful right there, right? Obviously, this is a false church. A woman can either represent a church or pure church or a false church here if it's mentioned as a prostitute obviously it's a false church it says that it has the colors red and purple what churches what church today in their in their in their in their um, services they use the colors red and purple right She's also called the Mother Church, right? She's called the Mother Church because she says she has daughters. Meaning this powerful church has many churches. If you're a mother and you have children, they're going to resemble you in one way or another, right? They might have your nose, they might have your eyes, they might have your attitude. <laughs> They might have whatever, right? They're going to resemble you in one way or another, right? This church, which is none other than the Catholic Church, has daughters. You might say, well, I'm not worried about it because I'm not Catholic. You might be the daughter of this church. You're keeping Sunday holy. You're a mother of this church. I mean, you're a daughter of this church. You believe that right when you die, you go to heaven or hell? then you're a daughter of this church. You keep these pagan holidays, you're a daughter of this church, right? All these different things. What it's talking about is when the United States, the second beast came out, Protestant Christianity came out with it too, right? Protestant Christianity blew up here in the United States. You have Pentecostal, you have Baptist, you have Methodist, you have Seventh-day Adventist, you have non-denominational churches, right? You drive around tomorrow on Sunday, right? There's tons of Christian churches, right? They all claim to have the truth, right? They all claim to have the truth. But why are they so popular? Why don't we study what the Bible says and rather than follow what the mother church tells us. If you're, if, you're, um, if you're a teenager or you're grown, you're 20, 30 years old, and your mom tells you, you need to do what I tell you, even if it goes against God. Are you going to follow your mom or are you going to follow what God has for us? Amen. I don't want to be a daughter to this mother. I don't want to be a daughter to this false system, this antichrist system, right? The second beast is false Christ popular Christianity in the last days. When Jesus was taken to the cross, Jesus was Jewish, or is Jewish, right? Jesus was Jewish, right? His own people, the church, Begged Rome, the government, to kill Jesus. Did y'all catch that? The Jewish people begged Rome to kill Jesus. The church went to the government to kill Jesus. His own people. In our last days, in the last days, 
popular Christianity is going to beg the government to persecute the true Christians. It's coming, friends. The mark of the beast. You know, a lot of churches, a lot of Christians right now, they're blind to this. They think this evil man is going to appear out in the, in, uh, in the Middle East, claiming to be the Antichrist. But did you know that the devil never comes in evil form? He comes de like deceptive, right? He uses deception. That's how the devil gets us, right? Us men, we're deceived a lot of times when this woman comes across us and she's dressed half naked, right? Women too. Women are deceived too, right? And then they're, they're claiming, you know, I, I know who God is. I love God too. And we get in these bad relationships. You know, we try to say, well, I'll change him. Well, I'll change her. We got to follow God all the way, right? The devil comes in a deceptive way. The Antichrist is not just a man. The Antichrist is a system. Is a system that came from Rome. With the man as his head which is the Pope, right? The Antichrist is a system. This is the Vatican system. It's Roman system. We see Roman images all around us. Did you know the symbol of Nike comes from Rome? Did you know the leaves that you see on some clothing? That comes from Greece. Did you know the word Latino? It equals 666. There's so many things that come from this Antichrist beast, right? Does that mean that if you're Latino that you're, you're part of the Antichrist? No. It's just God is showing us what all, what this pagan kingdom was going to do, right? We have all kinds of pagan symbols all around us, right? When you watch the Super Bowl, that Super Bowl is in the shape of the Roman Colosseum in Rome. Why do you think they put the Super Bowl in Roman numerals. It's all around us. We don't see it. It's all around us. Rome still exists spiritually, right? And it's trying to deceive. But that's why the second beast, the United States, makes an image to the first beast and does everything that Rome did, right? That's why it's all around us here in the United States. The second beast along with popular Christianity, they're going to beg the government to persecute the true Christians, the true followers. Does that mean that you have to be part of a denomination? You know, some churches claim we're the, we're the remnant church. Is the denomination a remnant? No. The Bible says the remnant is those that keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Right? You keep, his, you keep His commandments, you have the testimony of Jesus Christ, you are the remnant. The Bible says that people that follow God is the church, not a building, not a denomination. But yet, God will still save people from the Seventh-day Adventist Church. God will still save people from the Baptist Church. God will even save people from the Catholic Church. If they're following God all the way. It's not about following a denomination. It's about following God, keeping His commandments, and having the faith of Jesus. And the te having the testimony of Jesus Christ, right? Having the testimony of Jesus Christ. It's following His truths, no matter what. Does that mean that people, that our grandma and grandpa, that we know maybe were serving God, and they went to church on Sunday, does that mean they'll be lost? No. Because the Bible says that we're judged according to what we know. Right? If we didn't know any better, but we were serving God with all that we knew, you will be saved. Right? But once it's revealed to you, once something is brought to you, right now for those watching online, this is being revealed to you. 
It's your responsibility to go check it out in the Word of God. Because now, the Bible says people will be destroyed for lack of knowledge, right? Amen. The Bible also says that once truth is revealed to you, you are to keep it and follow it. So we are to follow His truth. Amen? Whatever is revealed to you. We know that the first beast speaks, speaks blasphemies. They say that they're able to forgive your sins, right? I had, a, I had a, a Catholic brother, a good friend of mine, but he argued with me. Doesn't the Bible says forgive one another? Yes, we forgive one another, but for me to cleanse you of your sins, for me to forgive your sins, uh, that's not the same. We're not, I'm, not able, I'm not God. I'm not able to purify you. I'm not able to cleanse you, right? I'm not able to make you pure. Only God can do that. We can forgive each other for our faults. If I did you wrong or you did me wrong, we can forgive each other that way. But for me to forgive you of your sins and give you eternal life, only God can do that. We don't need to go to the priest, right? We don't need to pray to the Virgin Mary, right? Amen. We don't need to bow down before a cross and pray to it, right? Amen. There's no power in that cross. That cross is only there to remind us of what happened on that cross. That it's an image. Amen. Check this out. I'm glad you said that, sister. Check this out. Did you know the Bible talks about the Ten Commandments in the book of Exodus, chapter 20, right? The Ten Commandments are right there. And the kids will be presenting the Ten Commandments here in a minute. Did you know the Ten Commandments... The Christian Ten Commandments or the Catholic Ten Commandments is different than the Christian Ten Commandments. Did y'all know that? When, if you go to a Catholic picture or the Catholic Catechism and read their Ten Commandments, they still have Ten Commandments. Their, our Fourth Commandment, which says keep the Sabbath holy, is their Third Commandment. Our fifth commandment that says honor your father and mother is their fourth commandment. You want to know why? Because they removed the second commandment that says don't bow down to graven images and worship them. There's a town not too far here from Amarillo where the cross is and groom. I don't know if y'all know. I like going there. I like to check it out. But did you know that's Catholic? That's run by the Catholic Church. There they have a picture of the Ten Commandments. It's a, stat, it's, a, it's a stone. And it's got the Ten Commandments right there. It's a Catholic Ten Commandments. The second commandment that says don't bow down to graven images and worship them, it's not on there. I'm not making it up. Drive over there to Groom, Texas. Look at the Ten Commandments, the Catholic Ten Commandments. The second commandment that says don't bow down to graven images is gone. It's not, it's not in there. So when they took out the second commandment, they moved all the other ones up. So what's the Ten Commandments? So you would say, well, now they only have nine commandments, right? <laughs> so what they did, they split the Tenth Commandment into two. Their ninth commandment says, don't cover thy neighbor's wife. And the tenth commandment says, don't cover thy neighbor's goods. The same commandment. Well, so they would still have ten commandments. Well, yeah. That is prophesied in the book of Daniel, ch chapter 7, that it says that the little horn would intend to change times and laws. Yeah. Right? So it didn't only change the Sabbath. It didn't only bring these pagan holidays but, you know, it, it also, the Bible says the next day starts at sunset, right? Mm -hmm. So when the sun goes down tonight on Saturday, this evening, it's Sunday already. Yeah. Rome said, no, it's at midnight. Yeah. They changed it. That's why they have midnight, uh, midnight services. I don't know if y'all knew that. They also have sunrise services on Easter and it's crazy because most Christian churches 
are doing the same. During Easter, they say, let's go have sun sunrise services. They, they don't even know that they're, 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 making, they're bowing before the sun, sun worship. On Easter Sunday, they go have church as the sun's coming up. Sunrise services. It's all there. It all comes together. It all comes together, right? But the church has daughters, right? Like I mentioned before. The church has daughters. If we follow these teachings, these false teachings, we become part of the mother church, right? We become part of this first beast. The Antichrist beast, right here. This is the second beast. This is where we're at today, right? right. This second beast has made an image to the first beast. The second image, I mean the second beast has made an image to the first beast. Sun worship. The woman riding the beast. This beast right here is the same beast right here. But now it's a woman's riding it, it's controlling it. That woman right there is a representation of Jezebel. The Bible says that that's Jezebel. Check this out. History repeats itself, right? History repeats itself. What was uh, Jezebel's, what was the king's name? Ahab? Was it Ahab? Jezebel's husband? I believe it was Ahab. I might be saying it wrong. Y'all might correct me later on. Ahab was king of Israel. Who was Israel? God's people, right? He was supposed to lead his people in the ways of God, right? But as he was walking around, he came across this woman. Man, she's fine. Right? She's not a follower of God, but man, she's fine. Right? He marries her. Jezebel, Jezebel controls, I mean, Jezebel is a, believes in paganism, worships false gods, right? Jezebel follows Jezebel follows uh, false gods, right? Here we see Jezebel controlling her husband. Instead of her husband saying, no, I'm going to lead my people in the ways of God, right? She controls him. You know, this is also symbolic. There is so much prophecies in the Word of God. It's also prophesied... This also is telling us that this woman controlling the beast is also literal. Women in the last days controlling their husbands. Amen. The Bible says that a, wo a woman of God is supposed to submit herself upon a man of God, right? Amen. But a man of God, not just any man, right? The man is the, the leader. He's the spiritual leader in the home, right? But what do we see today? With the women's movement and with the churches, you have women pastors. I'm sorry for those watching if y'all disagree with me. But the Bible never says a woman should be a pastor. Amen. The Bible never says a woman should be an elder. The Bible always talked about a male being a pastor or a priest or an elder, right? I'm just saying what the Bible says. But in these last days, Instead of men standing up for God's truth, the women are stepping in and taking charge. Yeah. But that's another prophecy. But here, this false church is controlling the Antichrist, right? That woman is Jezebel. Ahab was king of Israel. He was supposed to lead his people in the ways of God. But instead, he allowed Jezebel to run his kingdom, right? Right? Who was alive during the time of Jezebel? Elijah. You know Elijah? And Elijah, he was scared of, of, of uh, Jezebel. That's how much power she had. Jezebel had sexual relationships with other kings. You know, she was cheating on her husband, right? She was not just controlling her husband, but she was cheating on her husband. The reason she was doing that to get world power, right? 
That's why this Antichrist system with the woman right in it, she's called a prostitute. She becomes powerful because she has world influence. I guess that saying she's been around is, is there. I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but I'm just saying what the Bible says. She, she's been around the world. This Roman false Christianity has been around the world and everyone around the world is tied to her in one way or another. This woman is controlling all false Christianity around the world. Amen? She is controlling everything around. And it talks about the second image of the United States making an image to the first beast, the Antichrist system. And we see it through all the practices and all the false teachings, right? She has money too. The Vatican is the richest kingdom in the world. And yet it's the smallest kingdom in the world. The little one. It's the richest. It controls the Bank of America. I don't know if y'all knew I don't know if you all knew that. It controls world governments around the world. Why is it that when the Pope comes to the United States, whatever city it comes to, everything is shut down? And the president goes there. Whatever president is the president during that time goes and meets the Pope there. Right? And not just the president, but other Christian churches, Baptists, Pentecostal, non-denominational are there. Let's say, let's work together. Let's work together as Christians. You hear that say a lot. That's why they will enforce the mark of the beast. And if you don't go along with what they say, popular Christianity along with the mother church, you will be persecuted. You won't be able to buy or sell. Are you ready for that, my friends? Are you ready to stand up for God's truth? If we can't stand up for the Sabbath today and say no to our jobs, or to our jobs and say, I don't want, I'm not going to work on the Sabbath, even if you want to fire me, if we can't stand up for that today, are we going to be able to stand for when they pass the mark of the beast and you, they say you won't be able to buy or sell? You won't have a job anymore? You're going to lose your car? You're going to lose your house? I'll lose my lowrider. <laughs> right? We'll lose everything. Are you willing to do that? Are you willing to go all the way? Right now, we're going through small trials. If you're going through things, those are only things to build your faith up. Allow those little trials to build your faith up, right? So when the mark of the beast is enforced, it's going to be enforced by the second beast, the United States, but it's going to be worldwide, right? It's going to be worldwide along with other, along with other denominations and along with other churches. So many churches I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. I wasn't going to say it, but I'm going to say it. The 501c3. If your church is part of the 501c3, a nonprofit, you're signed up with Rome already. You are signed up with Rome. Because in that law, they say you are not to discriminate against women and homosexuals. So in order for you to continue to have your church, you have to allow homosexual people to be pastors, and you have to allow women to be pastors. That's why a lot of churches are doing it, because they don't want to go against the law. If you're part of 501c3, you're signed up with Rome. Are you willing to say, I don't want that. I'd rather pay taxes. I mean, what's... <laughs> I'd rather pay taxes, right? Yeah. I don't want anything that has to do with, with Rome, with the Vatican, right? But it's not just the Vatican, it's not just Catholicism, it's popular Christianity all around us, right? It's popular Christianity. Let us follow His truth. Let us follow the Bible. Let's read our final verse. Revelation chapter 19. There's hope. 
There's hope for God's people. Amen. Revelation chapter 19, verse 7 through 9. Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory for the marriage of the Lamb has come and his wife has made herself ready. And to her was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright, for the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. And he said to me, Write, Blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, These are the true saints of God. Amen? <laughs> you might just want to hold it. I didn't fall down the phone here. I died. <laughs> here in Revelation chapter 19 verse 7 through 9 tells us God's people will be seen dressed in white. Right? We're God's, it's God's righteousness. God covers us with his righteousness. Right? The Bible says put on Christ. Do I just go in somewhere and put on Christ? No. What it means is be obedient to Christ. Ask God for forgiveness of your sins. Ask Him to give, vic give you victory, right? Be born again, right? What does it mean to be born again? Die to your old ways and follow God. You're a new creation, right? We shouldn't want nothing to do that has to do with sin. We should hate sin now, right? We will be seen here celebrating a wedding. The marriage of the Lamb. We are the, the church. The people that follow God are, is the church. He, he's marrying us. Jesus is coming for his bride. Are we going to go with him? Not if you're not dressed in white. If you're dressed in a different color, he's not taking you. He's not taking me. If I'm dressed in blue, I'm dressed in red, I'm dressed in black, he's not taking me. I must be dressed in what? White. In white. Of course, that's not literally. It doesn't mean you got to wear white every day. What it's talking about is, do you have Christ? Has Christ covered you with his righteousness? Are you covered by the blood of Jesus? He makes us pure as snow. White as snow, right? So if you're obedient to God, you're born again. You've died to your old ways. You are dressed in white. And that's who Jesus is coming for that, for that wife. He's coming for that lady. Not this other lady that's riding the beast. But this lady that's pure. Are you that lady today? Are you that wife today? Are we pure before the eyes of the Lord? Not in our own strength but in, in the strength of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? And that is my prayer, that we all get ready. That we all get ready. Does that mean I need to buy all the guns, all the machine guns, and all the weapons? Yep. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it means we got to prepare spiritually. Amen? Because when that day comes, we just got to run. We got to go yeah. take off to the Rocky, hills. Rocky Mountain. Rocky Mountain, right? We got to go into the to the out to the to the country. We got to go out in the go out to Colorado. And God God will provide. God will provide. You don't got to go and buy all these camp foods. You don't got to buy all these weapons. God will protect you. And even if you get caught in the midst of all this and your head is cut off, cuz the Bible says some people will lose their heads. Even if you are thrown in prison, even if they do take your children, are you going to be able to be stay faithful before God and say, they're going to come before you and say, if you don't follow what we say, we'll take your children away from you. <laughs> you know what? We might, they might die, we might die. But what's next, guys? What's next? The kingdom of God. Heaven, right? Yeah. At his second coming, right? So it's going to be tough. It's not going to be easy. But we got to trust in the Lord no matter what. Right? Let us trust in the Lord. Let us pray.
Heavenly Father, thank you for this uh, study. Thank you for these prophecies, how you uh, show us what happened in the past, what happened, what's happening in the present, and what's going to happen in the future. Lord, help us to understand your prophecies, <clears throat> but most importantly, help us to understand who you are, Lord, and how we may receive you, and how we may ask for forgiveness of our sins, Lord. Help us to become your creation, a new creation, Lord. And thank you for everything that you do, Lord. Thank you for showing us all this that you show us in the book of Daniel and in the book of Revelation, Lord. Thank you for blessing us, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that um, a seed was planted for all those watching. A seed was planted and that uh, it's up to us if we allow you to water us and for us to grow in the ways that you have for us, Lord. We thank you, we thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Heavenly Father, thank you so much. Jesus Christ, thank you so much. Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your son Jesus to die on the cross for us. Amen. Amen. We'll see everyone next Saturday. And this concludes our part three series of this seminar. Uh, we will see everyone next Saturday at 11 a.m. 900 North Pierce, Amarillo, Texas. That's true. Come on, kids. <laughs> I almost forgot. All right. I'm going to take this down. The kids uh, did a project downstairs, and they're going to present what they did. Brother Rick, if you can just go ahead and turn that off real quick. All right. Okay, so we took our kids downstairs. Uh-uh, don't do that. Come on. We took our kids downstairs. Come on. Okay, so downstairs we had an activity. We had two today, actually. And so the first activity we have is the Ten Commandments. Can you show everybody? So we have them. We have them backwards, but. <laughs> so each kid got to, I read the Ten Commandments to them. I explained to them what you, what do that? So I explained to them what each commandment meant, and they got to take turns writing them out. I think y'all can tell. <laughs> um, and so um, I asked them downstairs when we were in the basement, I asked them what they learned today, and we had some tell me about the animals that, that on the second project, they said they remembered them from other stories, and I had them tell you about those. And he went to the bathroom, he was coming back. Um, so, <laughs> welcome back. <laughs> he, he was so talkative, he, he knew all the stories. Okay, so I'm gonna have each one of y'all read, uh, tell me one commandment y'all remember, okay? What was the commandment that you remember? Lie. L lie? Yeah, you're the one who said that one, good job. Okay, which number is that? Number? Four. Which number, no, right here. Which number is that? Nine. Do not lie? Yeah. Yes, it was number nine. He said the commandment, do not lie. Okay? And I had him read that commandment too. And then what was the two commandments you said? The two commandments was number one, um, do, not, do not worship any other gods. And number five, honor your mother and father. Yes, she said both of those on her own. And I, yeah. So, um, the twins, did y'all, y'all remember any of the commandments that we learned? No. No? <laughs> you forgot? Yeah, they uh, they were really excited to paint, so they were they were all up out of their seats. Okay, so we're gonna do. Y'all want to present y'all's paintings? Y'all did. Each of them got to pick an animal or a, a rainbow or a cross. Or a dinosaur. Or a dinosaur. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, okay. So I said he could go first if he would sit down, and he did listen, so he gets to go first. Can you show everybody what you did and choose, uh, the colors you chose? Uh, I did white, and gray. And gray. And what, what was the animal that you did? Dinosaur. You did a dinosaur. Yeah, he was really excited. He saw the dinosaur. He snatched it right up. Okay, your turn. What colors did you do and what did you do?
Okay, and then what was the what was the picture you chose? Um, a rainbow. You chose a rainbow. And And he is very excited about his. Are you ready to tell everybody what yours is? Okay, tell everybody your colors and what you chose. Black. I did green, blue, uh, yellow, orange, uh, purple. And what is it? And what is it? A turtle. A turtle, yeah. <laughs> and I helped him with his. He chose the monkey, and he wanted to do yellow. That's the only color he would let me do on his, was yellow. And then, you want to show everybody yours? Mine is a butterfly, and I use the colors purple, pink, and turquoise. Yes. So all of, our, uh, all of them um, got to do whatever, uh, paint them how they wanted, and I did ask them, what each one reminded them of. I asked, what did the, rema the rainbow remind them of? And who was it that said, it was him. He said that it reminded him of Noah's Ark. And uh, then I told the story of Noah's Ark, and then I asked where all the animals were from, and then that's where she got right. She said Adam and Eve. She So uh, it was the story of creation where all the animals. Oh, and, and, and oh, the this one is like, the Yeah, I did the lion. Yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah, uh, Children's Church was fun today. I'm glad y'all got to come. Did you want to read the Ten Commandments? Oh, Vanessa? yeah. Yeah, I can read off the Ten Commandments. I want to give you yeah. this. All right. Y'all come over here. Okay. So I'm going to read off each commandment, okay? So, number one, do not worship any other gods. Number two, uh, do not make any idols. Number three, do not misuse the name of God. And these are, uh, these are more simplified for the kids to understand. And number four, keep the Sabbath holy. Number five, honor your father and mother. Number six, do not murder. Number seven, do not commit adultery. Number eight, do not steal. Number nine, do not lie. And number ten, do not covet. So I had each one of those explained to the kids, and, and they had lots of fun. So thank you, guys. Thank you for viewing our videos. Hope this was for you and yours. Um, hopefully, please to like and subscribe to our videos and everything we have, every platform we have. Thank you. God bless.